You are most welcome to this talk. And as you'll probably notice, after all this time, we've decided to change our poster. I think the old poster that we had on COVID was getting a bit dated now because it's no longer possible to prevent the spread of the Omicron variant. So we've got a new one. And what this represents is is how to stay healthy and what health is all about because I think the main point of this channel is about preventing disease, promoting health and, and, and optimising disease management should disease occur so we can keep ourselves healthy and our families as healthy as we can and ideally prevent disease as far as we can. So the aim is to have a long life that's as healthy as possible and then basically die all of a sudden. I know this sounds a bit of a strange thing to say, but we want to be as healthy for as long as we can. And obviously we're all going to die at some point, but we want to die fairly quickly, not after a long protracted illness. And, and, and you and me have both seen this. We've seen people die of heart disease and heart failure and cancers and dementia over 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 months, years, if not decades. And that's not what we want. So let's have a look at this new poster and see what it means. Well, in the middle, we have the healthy person. So this hieroglyph here <laughs> is designed to show the healthy person. This is what we want. We want health. We want to be in a good state of vigour. But the point is, what are the factors that affect that? What, what can affect our health? What can take away good health? See, health is one of those things that if you've got it, you've just no idea how precious it is. Those who have lost their health will give anything to get it back. And I've actually talked to people who are really very rich and they say, you know what, John, I will give everything I have just to be healthy again, just to be able to get out of this bed, just to be able to walk down the street again, talk to my friends again. Health is everything. So we have the healthy person in the middle. What influences health? Well, this here is a broccoli sprout and an apple. <laughs> it's the first Hyla Griff. So um, are we in the screen here? I think we're more or less in the screen. Do we need to go this way a bit? There we go. There we go. We're in the screen now. So um, healthy diet is absolutely, totally essential. Not only a healthy diet, eating lots of plants. You know, you know the old adage, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. So eating lots of plants is a really good idea. This is good for fiber. It's good for vitamins. It's good for minerals. And then when that food gets through into the colon, it's good for the microbiome, these billions of bacteria that live with us and promote our health in all sorts of ways we're just learning to we're just learning to uh, learn about as, as we as we live with them this symbiosis between us and these these bacteria so a good diet is really healthy and and, and of course a bad diet is really unhealthy we eat too much processed food refined carbohydrates saturated fats all of these things that are really bad. So basically, we need to get back to eating proper food as opposed to synthesized foods that humans have made that might taste nice and be high in salt and high in sugar, but really aren't good for us. We are designed to live in a really basic way as hunter gatherers, foraging for food for different types of vegetables. And then occasionally the young men in the tribe will make a kill and we'll eat some meat. But most of the time we are hunter gatherers, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. Then the next one here, this is exercise. This, this illustrates exercise. This is, a, this is a person running. So we need plenty of exercise. And again, we, we are designed to be active. We're not designed to live in front of a computer screen. We're not designed to have a sedentary lifestyle. We're supposed to be active and we need to exercise. This burns up the sugars. It burns up the calories, helps keep the abdominal obesity down and exercise is good for mood we, we know we know that if people exercise it improves their mood it can relieve depression all of these things are really really good and we need to exercise it's good for cardiovascular fitness it keeps the blood going to the peripheries it reduces the likelihood of arterial disease heart disease strokes keeps the blood pressure down all of these things so important because of exercise and we notice that so far that arrow has been going from food to affect the individual. Exercise affects the individual. But this one here, 
This is actually a brain. And of course, the brain represents the mind, the mind while we are in this physical state. While we're in this physical state, the, the, the brain is generating the mind. The mind is a product of the brain. So we need to keep the brain and the mind healthy. So this really stands for psychological health, really, because the health of the body affects the health of the mind. Healthy body, the mind is more likely to be healthy. healthy. The brain is more likely to be healthy. But if you have a healthy mind, then all these psychosomatic effects that feed back into the body. So the body affects the mind, the mind affects the body. And we need to keep these as healthy as we can. So think about good things, have good relationships as much as we can. Do things that keep the mind and the brain in good working order, good, good nutrition. All, all of these things greatly help the mind. Having interests keeping the mind active with positive things and when the mind is positive that will affect the body in a positive way and then we'll get this positive feedback the healthy body will give a healthier mind the healthier mind will give a healthier body and you into this positive feedback cycle now this next sign here this is a point of uh, presumably some sort of beverage <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is a, this is a cigarette now okay only about 20 percent of the population smoke now but what this shows is that there's lots of environmental toxins that can be bad news and poisonous so y yes this could be things that we eat it could be highly processed meat it could be highly processed food it could be too much alcohol it could be cigarette smoke it could be cannabis smoke it could be any of these things, but there's also lots of toxins in the environment that can cause disease. So we think about atmospheric pollution. We think about additives to food. All of these things in the environment, particularly chemical things, that can adversely affect the body. For example, some of these toxins are what we call carcinogenic carcin. They can cause cancer, genic, beginning. They can begin cancer. So lots of toxins, for example, inhaling dust or fumes can cause disease of the lungs. In inhaling, inhaling, or, or inhaling or eating carcinogens can affect the body, leading to potential cancers. So lots of toxins that we can learn to avoid. And that, again, that's going that way from toxins into the body. Now, this one here, this is a DNA molecule. So this represents genetics. Now, it's been said in healthcare that you can, the most important single thing in determining your health is to choose your parents carefully. And, and I'm afraid there's a fair bit of truth in that, but we can't do much about that. But, but uh, the genetics, there's a lot of genetic factors in disease. So the main thing is to recognise what your genetic weaknesses might be and then to account for those with good lifestyle factors. So th th this idea that the genetics is affecting the individual. But we see this arrow is two ways. It's also going from the individual to the genetics. Now, this isn't going to change your fundamental genetics, but this is a complete new field called epigenetics. And epigenetics is what we do in life, starting in fetal life, what we do in early childhood, what we do in life that actually affects the way genes are turned on and off. So this is a two way flow. So, yes, we're given a certain amount of genetics. There's nothing we can do with that. That is determined at the point your father's sperm fertilized your mother's ovum. That is done. We can't do anything about that. That is, I suppose you could say that's just the look of the draw. It's the genetic card or the genetic hand of cards that we are given. But the way we live can program which, which genes are turned on and which genes are turned off. So we can learn to put on healthy genes, turn on healthy genes, turn off the unhealthy genes by lifestyle factors. This is what we call epigenetics. That's why that's going both ways. Then we look here, and this, of course, I think we all recognise now is a virus. Now, of course, there's many different viruses. These can cause infection. The viruses get inside our cells, replicate inside our cells, cause infection inside our cells. But also, there's lots of potential bacterial infections that can get into us, causing infection. And that really is what infection is. Is. Infection is the presence of microscopic organisms replicating in the body tissues. The body beneath the skin is supposed to be completely sterile.
If we get these organisms, bacteria, viruses under the skin, in the body, in the tissues, in the lungs, for example, potentially causing pneumonia, that is infection. And there's other things can cause infection as well. There's prions, which are proteinaceous infectious particles. They can cause a particular type of disease. There's protozoa that can cause a particular type of disease, like malaria, for example, is caused by a protozoa. So there's various infections that we can get. But there again, this could have been a two-way arrow, really, because the way that we live can optimise our immune system. For, for example, we know that people with good amounts of vitamin D are likely to have a better immune system. People with a good diet are likely to have a better immune system. So that could have been a two-way article, a two-way arrow, but we've done, it, we've done it as one in this case. Now, this group, this hylogriff here is a group of people. And this shows that as human beings, we are designed to live in communities. We live in families, we live in groups. No man, no woman, no child, no baby is an island. We need to live together and we need to interact positively together. So the main thing is that we live positively in these synergistic interactions with those around about us, in our families. The children to the parents, the parents to the children, the friend to the friend, the husband to the wife, the wife to the husband, the lover to the lover. All these things, these relationships are all absolutely vital that impact our health. But of course, our health and the way we choose to live impacts the other way on our social relations. In a sense, our attitude determines our social relations. So we need to think about our social relationships, how they are affecting us and how we affect them. And again, we can have this synergistic feedback. Good social groups, good health, good attitude, good attitude, good health more positive social relationships. So feel free, and I give you permission here, to get rid of the toxic relationships in your life. Feel free to get rid of the positive relationships in your life and get this positive feedback system going. Now this list, that last one here, this is supposed to be the sun. <laughs> and of course the sun gives off re radiation. And we're thinking about beta radiation here that comes to the skin and produces the vitamin D, which we know is so important for all aspects of immunity and health in general. But as well as that, this represents the environment in general. So we are outside in the sunshine. We're outside in an environment. We live in environments so we can optimize that environment to optimize health. And this environment includes things like pollution. Can we minimize pollution? Can we minimize our exposure to pollution. This environment here includes the spaces that we live in. The environment here includes our, our contact with, with nature, that, that we need this contact with that which is what we are designed to live in. So we look outside and, and we see the green of the countryside. We see the blue of the sky. We see the blue of the, the sea. And these are just the environments we are supposed to live in. So you can say, if you like, that humans are designed to live in this environment. We don't do well in this environment. Or you can say that humans evolved to live in this environment. Therefore, we are optimized in that environment. So whatever your philosophical, theological underpinnings doesn't matter too much. We need this positive, natural earth ecosystem environment. We are designed to live in ecosystems. We can only live in ecosystems as we interact with our environment. And that takes us back round to good nutrition, which of course is promoted by a good environment. So there we go. That was just my simple idea of this, this poster. Take it or leave it as you will. We might be coming back to some of these things in more detail. But all of these effects are interacting with our individual health and well-being very often in a two-way pattern as we learn about these as we understand these interactions as we look at the research and the evidence that supports these interactions we can learn to optimize our health and the health of the communities we live in and the health of our environment and the food that we eat, and the exercise that we take, and the mind that we have, and the toxins we avoid, and the genetics we interact with, 
and the microbes that we live in symbiosis with and sometimes suffer from disease from in our social interactions i think you get the idea thank you very much for watching and i hope you like the new poster